What up, YouTube? This video is taken on this Friday morning, May 26th, 2023. Time right now is 9.26 a.m. And I decided to go to Bush Gardens after not being here for a long time. I got an email. I actually made this decision yesterday because I got an email yesterday saying that Bush Gardens would be open early for pass numbers all weekend. Uh, I think just an hour early, 9 o'clock compared to 10. So against my better judgment of going to a theme park on Memorial Day weekend, I decided to go ahead and give it a try. I haven't ridden the new swing ride. So uh, yeah, as you can see, this place is totally dead. And uh, I'm just going to take it easy. I worked last night, so I was up all night, so I'm probably only going to be here till just the morning I'm trying to think the best way to get to this swing ride I don't know if cutting through there would get you to the swing ride faster or not but actually it might be worth stopping and doing cheetah hunt first because cheetah hunt usually takes usually has a really long line traditionally and as you can see no one's here A chance to ride the sky tower since they reopened or not sky tower sky ride i uh really enjoyed their sky ride it, it was a nice one with the safari you could overlook but and i thought they made an announcement they were going to reopen it quite a while ago but maybe i misheard but yeah that was a good decision walk right on front seat and uh it was actually a real enjoyable ride like I said, I usually skip that one because Cheetah's, Cheetah Hunt usually has a long line. But yeah, for a morning ride front seat, it's real enjoyable. So and now I'm going to make it to the new swing ride. If I can remember how to get there. Empty train. Another thing about Cheetah Hunt is they were running uh, two stations today. That's the first time since the pandemic that I've seen them run two stations. And the trough used to be dry where the old Rhino River ride, whatever that was, it was dry for a while, but they actually had water running through it this morning. Okay, here we are. 
So something interesting, I didn't realize this. They have two different types, milder or wilder. And if you want wilder, you had to ride it after 115. I did not know that. I wasn't planning on there's the train. I wasn't planning on um, well I didn't even know they had two versions of the ride. But I wasn't planning on staying after 115. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, so apparently it's closed, so I guess I'll make my way to Iron Gwazi. But um, this is what I was talking about. This trough was since the pandemic has always been empty, now it's filled up. But you used to not be able to walk back here to see this, so maybe that's why they filled it up with the waters. Since you can walk back here now. Another empty train. Okay, as I was walking out, there was like a barricade set up. And I was on the wrong side of the barricade, so I guess you're not supposed to be going to the back side of the park during these early morning previews. But uh, like I said, when I walk around from Cheetah Hunt and walk through where the hippo and the crocodile is, there's nothing stopping me from walking back there. But now it's time to hit some iron glasses. Someone on Reddit got a tour of the controls room on Iron Gwazi. And when they were showing pictures of the VFD, the main lift VFD had an idle current of 160, not 160 amps, 60 amps. And it barely moves at 60 amps. It's kind of hard to believe. see if I can try to find it. It's drawing 60 amps now. I think that's kind of insane. But what do I know?
seems that I got in line just in time because I waited two trains and got on, but the line's pretty relatively long right now. So it probably is going to be a busy day today. It is Memorial Day weekend after all. Uh, they were really slow loading. The train in front of me, it was 280 minutes for them to load. They were just kind of taking their time. I also noticed something interesting when I rode this time. I think I got a shot of it, but they have these steel supports that are anchoring down some of the wood structure. And it's kind of ingenious in my mind. Maybe this is a common thing. But these cross ties between the steel supports, there are two pieces of pipe that one fits in the other. And I'm guessing the way they assemble it is they attach both of them to the support, them fit into each other. And then once everything slid together, after the fact, they, they must weld it into a solid beam. I don't know. When I was looking at that, I thought it was kind of interesting, that design concept. Although you think with everything being all computer-aided design that they wouldn't need to do that because they could probably figure out the angle of the cross beam ahead of time. I was thinking about going to Montu and riding Montu, but, uh, you know, I already walked clean over to that section of the park, so I figured I would just walk back and maybe go and shriek, shriek uh, or maybe see how long Tigris is. Did I walk by? Oh, no, Tigris is up here. Maybe, maybe a Tigris is in a long line. I'll ride on that because I usually skip that one. They got the flamingos out. I think last time I was here, they had the flamingos in because there was some kind of invasive bird flu disease that was killing birds. And it's funny, when I was here and I saw the sign saying that that's why they had the flamingos inside, I ran across the Instagram reel where this girl who had ostriches, like lost a lot of her ostriches because of that invasive bird flu or whatever. Another thing about Iron Gwazi is they only had two trains. I thought I saw on that same Reddit post where the guy got the tour of the controls room, I thought I saw that they had a third train shipped in. So I don't know, did they already do the train swap? Or, but the third train, there was nothing in the maintenance area there. So they must either already did the train swap or they took that third train and they put it in storage let's see it's been a year I guess maybe they already did the train swap after a year to start their cycle program comment below if you know okay one of those kids says that Shrika doesn't open until 1030 which is 10 minutes but there's already a line. So I can either walk back to Cuba or I can wait for Tigers to open. Yeah, there's a sign out here at 1030. I might go wait for Tigers to open because I usually don't ride Tigers. I doubt Cuba's gonna have a long line.
worked out pretty good two front rows back to back although I almost got my butt kicked over riding the front of Tigris so there was you know we were waiting there for the gates to open so the gate opened and, and there was two groups walking in front of me two groups of two in front of me one of them went to row two and one of them went to the rear row so then I went to the front row now, in their defense, the front row is like separate because it has a longer line. So I think they were thinking they were waiting in the front row, but they were really waiting in row two. And I kind of had it set in my mind that I was, even if someone was in the front row, I was going to wait for the second train. But uh, yeah, I got first train front row. Well, as soon as I walk up next to the guy, he realizes that he's not in the front row. And he goes, oh, I thought I was waiting in the front. I said, no, the front row is back there and I pointed to the entrance of the front row. When I pointed there he... I think I'm going the right way? Oh yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> as soon as I pointed to where the entrance to the front row line was, the gates opened and he shot in the uh, front row. So I took a step back behind the gate because I figured, well, I'll just wait for the next train. But... The ride operator, I'll tell you, was not having it. She was telling him, you gotta, you waited for the second row, you gotta go in the second row, you come in front of him. And then he turned to me and said, are you really gonna be quiet and be a, uh, I'm not gonna repeat what he told, <laughs> what he called me. And I was like, what are you talking about? You were waiting in the second row. So then he reluctantly went in the second row and I went in the first row, so it was a bit awkward. So I thought, man, I'm, I'm gonna get my butt kicked over this. But, uh, needless to say, after the ride was done, I got high hightailed it out of there. Went to Shrika. Got front row there. So, so far everything's coming pretty good. Let's see, what what time is it? 10.57. I'm debating on whether I should skip Kumba or not. Kumba did reach what it's 30th anniversary 
Is it 30? Or is it 25? It's either 25 or 30. Um, I guess maybe I'll ride it. Do a whole tour of the park. Well, the decision was made for me. I don't mind. To tell you the truth, I wasn't really in the mood to ride it. Oh, they are running it, though. Maybe I can film the park skews. Reluctantly ride it just for the fact that I was here. It, uh, it's too much of a headbanger for me. I just wonder if it was scheduled maintenance or if it's delayed opening. Because I know in the past they had Kumba like late opening, like doesn't open till noon. But usually they have a sign out there that says won't open till noon. Okay, let's move on. Let's see if we can go throughout the rest of the day without getting our butts kicked. Al interior del coche. Una vez sentado, bate la barra de vuelta a su cintura. Proteja a todos los artículos sueltos como sombreros y gafas. Ahora siéntese y disfrute de su recorrido en el Sand Circle. Welcome to the Sand Circle. the sand surfing that really didn't have a line and it always has a bit of a soft spot in my heart because I think it's cool that I rode that ride when I was in Williamsburg. I thought this morning I saw Falcon do a cycle but uh, it seems to be closed as well. Let's see if there's any sign about when it's going to open. But to tell you the truth when I was riding the sand serpent my stomach started feeling a little queasy. That happens to me. I can't uh, marathon rides. Well, certain rides can't marathon them like I used to. And I think it more has to do with when my stomach's empty. That's why I I eat breakfast before I got here. I stopped by Burger King, got two burritos and hash browns. Now it's closed for the day. May I have your attention, please? Tonight at 9 I wonder if I had a false a memory. Yeah, I saw it. I saw them. I thought it saw it cycling this morning. Located behind the Garden Cafe, beginning at 8:30 p.m. Thank you and enjoy your day at Bush Gardens. But yeah, I'm uh, currently doing one meal a day throughout the week. I haven't been sticking to it during the weekends, and I've been doing attempting to do you no know, drinkable calories too, but. Sometimes I get weak and I buy a soda. But uh, 
I've been losing uh, I've been losing quite a bit of weight doing that one meal a day. Oh, I didn't see if Scorpion was over. I really don't feel like riding Scorpion. I guess for the vlog's sake, we'll see if Scorpion's opening. But yeah, I this morning, or you no, know, yesterday, when I got up for work, um, I was four pounds away from my goal. I lunking my weight around 175. Yesterday when I woke up, I, I was uh, 179. I see people standing outside. It must be open. I'm a little reluctant about doing it. Even my stomach's a little sour and I run ride Montu. I'll see how long the line is. Oh, I'll film it for you guys. How's that? That's a good compromise, right? that gets me about the programming of the ride is that the motors run constantly. Oh no, I lied. I was made a liar. I wonder if they're going to start running when it clears the next block then. Oh no, I'm a liar. Yeah, I've been here before and the motors are running constantly. But... I think I'm gonna, since my stomach's a little sour, I think I'm gonna sit it out. Uh, Scorpion's no joke, it packs a little bit of a punch. Uh, when you're going around these hel helixes, a lot of positive G's. Is it positive? Yeah, a lot of positive G's. And, uh... I've, like I said, I worked last night, so I've been up since. I'm trying to think. Oh, you know what? I didn't get my eight hours of sleep yesterday because I couldn't sleep, so I got up early. I think I got up around one or two, and I did my homework, so I won't have to do any homework this weekend. But I see the spaghetti, spaghetti wire going, so we'll head over there and check that out. That's why I came here.
Welcome back, riders. We hope you enjoyed your ride on Serengeti Flyer. Please lift up on your restraint bar. Collect all personal belongings and exit quickly and carefully. Looks like I've been uh, lucking out with the lines. There's a line for this right now. I, uh, when I went to rode it, it was a walk-on. Um, I think it was a nice addition to the park. Well, enjoy your ride on uh, I really liked it, and supposedly that's the mild one. <laughs> to tell you the truth, when my stomach getting queasy, I got a little queasy riding that. <laughs> I mean, that's supposed to be the mild one. But yeah, it's a. I think it's a nice addition to the park. Uh, this past Thanksgiving time, or November, this past November, I went to Silver Dollar City for the first time, and it has the same restraints as the SNS coaster there. I want to say it's called. Oh, it's powder keg. I was gonna I almost call it I almost called it Buzzsaw Falls, but that's the Dudley Do right now. But yeah, it has the same restraints as powder keg. And uh, they seem like they operate a little different. On powder keg, the restraints were so finicky that they tell you not to pull down any restraints, the operators do it because there's a sequence on powder keg it's like there's a sequence between when you push down on it to and then when you fold it over on these when you fold it over I didn't realize they pushed down but then when the attendant came by he pushed down on it too so it's like the same design but I think there's some must be something different with the ratcheting mechanism and then the funny part is it looks like it slows down I tried to film it last second by there's there's a rubber pad on the actuator that slides back and forth and it slides it out and it rubs on something underneath the gondola to slow it down. But yeah, that was a nice addition. I think, like I said, I've been up since like one or two yesterday. So I think I am gonna ride Montu since I'm here. I'll push it a little bit, ride Montu, and then uh, call it a day. Uh, it turned out to be a beautiful morning. Not too hot either. It's not really that humid right now. We, uh, we've been in a dry spell, but we had rain the past couple of evenings. And it was supposed to have rain this evening as well. Okay, so Montu was quite a bit of a wait, and I, my stomach was starting to feel queasy just standing in line, so I decided not to go for it. Um, they were working on Cobra's Curse. There was like, looks like electricians. They had the fine electrician backpack. Um, they had some kind of wiring harness in their hand up on that brake run in front of me, but now they're cycling it. I didn't see if they were running one train on mine too. Because, like I said, the line wasn't moving at all. two trains on Montu. Just really slow. And I noticed they let a... There's a lot of uh, schools here today. I noticed they let a whole... When I was walking out, a whole school group through the quick queue. Questor building. Uh, Cobra's Curse just opened 30 minutes. But, yeah, I'm trying to get someone to go on the hunt to find out the company who made the Questor film. It's like Glennet. I think they're the ones who developed that motion cam, the FPV hel RC helicopter that um, with the 8 millimeter camera that they used to film that. Oh, they have it themed for Halloween. 
you know, I'm trying to get someone to do the research to try to contact that company to see if they can get information on how they did that. Because I'm sure that that was someone's like project back then, and they're probably were really motivated to get that all working. I can't believe they put an eight millimeter camera on an RC helicopter because those things vibrate a whole bunch. And they did an impressive dive off a waterfall. I don't know where that waterfall was that they did that dive at. But uh, yeah, I tried to get one guy who was documenting FPV history on YouTube. I told him about it and he didn't really look into it. He, but he said he didn't think it was FPV. He, he said he, he thought they were flying at line of sight. And then I was watching the FPV news with Joshua Bardwell and they were mentioning something about FPV in the 90s. So I sent It's Blunny an email, giving them all the information about it, and I never heard anything back. But. And with that, my battery died. So after that, I went home. But before I went home, here's a pro tip. I absolutely hate Bush Gardens food. I think they have horrible food. So afterwards, I stopped by a place that's right outside of Bush Gardens. It's literally in the corner of their overflow parking lot. It's called Mel's Hot Dogs. Apparently, it's been in Tampa forever. Uh, my friend Jamil told me about it. And uh, so I stopped there to get a hot dog and fries and a soda. And um, I highly recommend it. The menu is really affordable. And... You can get all sorts of types of hot dogs, pretty much a hot dog any way you want it. And one thing I noticed that was kind of unusual, on in the inside there, it's kind of themed like a 50s diner. And I was meeting a friend there, so I was kind of waiting to meet him, and I was kind of people watching. There was a lot of people on their lunch break from work in there. And for some reason, I just couldn't help but notice everyone seemed like they were in a good mood in there, which is kind of weird for the Tampa area. But yeah, everybody seemed like they were in a good mood. I don't know. It kind of stood out for me. Um, but anyway, with that uh, in the video, I hope you enjoyed it. I, I'm glad I had made the trek this morning to go there. I um, had a, a fun time this morning. A pleasantly a fun time. I usually don't go on holiday weekends. But thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.